Hey there boys and girls, this is Anjax and we are playing World of Warships today and today's video is going to be about the British Navy because they have finally arrived. Why it took Wargaming so long? Well, there are lots of factors about that but the main two are first, the United States Navy and the Imperial Japanese Navy were the ones uh, who saw most battles of the World War II. So Wargaming had focused on them uh, from the start and second, available blueprints. As a Russian game studio, they had available blueprints of the German Navy and Soviet Navy, which on the other hand was not the case with the British Navy. Waiting for the permission to obtain and use blueprints or adding nations that you can build easily? Well, that wasn't a choice to begin with. But they have finally arrived, so let us analyze them quickly. Before saying anything about Royal Navy like cruiser line, I have to point out that even in the weeks prior to the release, they had hiccups and problems of sort, so they tried to, you know, sort it out. Royal Navy cruisers uh, were more than a glass cannons and were fire breathers with a cheap, you know, flint 2.0. So Wargaming decided to, that as such, they won't be fun to play or to compete against. So they have uh, kind of redesigned Royal Navy Cruiser Line yet again. And what we have as a finished product is probably going to be a love and hate affair for the players. I'm not saying they are bad, totally bad, because they're not. But man, you're going to be frustrated at times. Royal Navy light cruisers are still light after changes, so their armor is basically pretty bad from bottom to tier 10. And they have armor piercing ammo only, but you have amazing heal and smoke sonar radar to compensate for that, along with torpedoes that are not fast but start with 6 kilometer range. It changes for the better in somewhat higher tiers, so why would anyone want to play Royal Navy cruiser line? Well, a lot of people are going to play it just because they're Royal Navy Cruiser Line. Just because there's a Union Jack on the mast. Hip hip hooray! But on a more serious note, Royal Navy Cruisers are really fun to play if you are aggressive destroyer cruiser captain. Because the torpedoes and the lack of long range damaging fire will push you to close in more than your armor can afford and you will need that aggressive side to succeed in the Royal Navy Cruiser Line. At least that's uh, my take on them so far. To me, they appeared as oversized destroyers so far. Oversized, highly maneuverable destroyers that have really bad detection range, can't fire HE, but nevertheless oversized destroyers. And this is actually really close to being historically accurate. Royal Navy cruisers were actually really relatively light armored. They also used uh, semi armor piercing rounds, which was specific to them, and they had the best trained crews with longest Navy tradition, which can be translated to the best heal in the game. So, Wargaming had actually done a fairly accurate representation of British cruisers so far. One important thing to mention about them is their guns. In short, you get 152mm guns in all tiers except tier 1. And they are really interesting because you get two things with them that you get with no other cruiser line. Phenomenal auto balance region and really, really short shell fuses. Translated, this means that you can land citadels even on a slightly angled ships and you're not gonna get over bends at all. So destroyer captains, better watch out because British ships nearby can uh, ruin your day. It's totally different thing that Royal Navy cruisers are really painful to play and are a source of great internet rant because the players are just not happy with them. My opinion on this is, yes, they are glass cannons and uh, you can't do damage worth the shit, but we all kind of knew that Royal Navy is going to be pretty hard to play, and for me, 
giving players opportunity to earn uh, Campbelltown with a uh, high skilled captain through set of missions was uh, Telltale Signs. British ships are going to be pain in the ass to play. But when you do actually play them, you see that love hate relationship I was talking about. I haven't progressed higher than tier 4 myself, but I know, I know I'm lazy even when it comes to Royal Navy ships. But so far, I had mixed feelings from game to game, from tier to tier. First, we have a Black Swan at tier 1, and uh, by just seeing its stats and armor layout, you see how large a world of pain you're getting yourself into because its armor is non existent. But it's, you know, tier 1, right? You can easily skip it or play through it in a couple of matches, so here you realize what's gonna happen, but hope for the best. On to Weymouth at uh, tier 2, and uh, here you get Citadel for days. And you get Citadels for days. At least that's what happened to me and a lot, a lot of, lots of players while I was playing so much that we were joking in the chat about it. Uh, all still in a good mood for the Royal Navy, but finally realizing that this line is going to be really painful to play because armor was non-existent, but hope dies last, right? At Tier 3 and the Kaladin, uh, here I actually got that oversized destroyer feel and first cracking with British ships, yeah, I, I know, I still can't believe that I got cracking with the British ship and it wasn't, you know, kill secure cracking, it was, you know, high damage stuff. And Kaladin uh, has a slightly better armor but her citadel is so sticking out that if you show your broadside just a little bit, you're gonna eat the bullet in a heartbeat. But knowing that fact and using ship's strong points, you can play a very decent match if you're not over tiered because at the same tier, you have chance if, if you are an experienced player that is no stranger to aggressive destroyer life play. I'm not you know, high-end player myself and I still manage to get decent amount of good matches and kills with it, although players were still complaining in chat or elsewhere on the internet. With this ship, all my previous suspicions were confirmed. Royal Navy Cruiser Line is just going to be different and too hard to play, but hey, it's uh, it's a challenge and uh, they are somewhat playable and you can still enjoy them. Well, not most of the times, but sometimes. Moving on, you know, at tier 4, you just get wrecked. This ship still uh, has even bigger citadel that sticks out of the water, almost non-existent armor. And anything with guns can punish you so bad that it is really painful. And when I say painful, I really mean painful. You can't stay stationary not even for a second, you can't give a broadside not for a second. And here other players started realizing that fact and start deleting you easily. And here we come to hate part of my personal relationship with British cruisers. Yes, you can still score kills and have a decent games, but be prepared to get punished and frustrated a lot. Now for uh, higher tiers, I can just give my opinion by watching at the ship's stats only, so let's go to tier 5 Emerald. And from what I can see, this start to get a little bit better as far as armor is concerned, but then you realize that that better armor can still be overmatched and punished by 152mm guns. And uh, here you realize also that Citadel thing is not getting smaller either. So it looks like a trend so far for all the British cruisers. When I look at the stats I see that players are gonna love Omaha after this ship and that says a lot about it. Onward to tier 6 lander. And here things get interesting, at least from this point of view. 
Citadel is finally at the waterline and not sticking out, and the armor is improving so it should be better experience. I just don't know because I'll have to play it to be sure, but from what I can see from other players' opinions, here uh, is where things start to get at least bearable. At tier 7, PG, by looking at stats you get a really bad surprise. Huge, enormous citadel, and although armor is slightly better, frontal armor, for example, can be overpowered with 203 mm guns. And imagine what battleship tier 7 can do to you if you get in their crosshairs. By looking at this, I started wondering if this is going to be too painful to endure, but hey. It's the Union Jack on the mast, so onward to tier 8, Edinburgh. That huge citadel thing is still here? Oh man, this is going to be painful. At least armor is a little bit improved. Now you can survive 203s. Bow in. But man, if battleship even sneezes your way, instant deletion in the making. Tier 9 and 10 Neptune and Minotaur are more or less the same thing. Huge Citadel and really bad armor that just can't withstand battleships in any scenario. So to summarize, Her Majesty's ships are extremely fragile and prone to damage. Islands are going to become your best friends and be prepared to get a lot of frustrations from them but look at it this way it's challenge and it's a really really challenge to play them but when you realize that they are different and try to adapt and play it differently than other cruiser lines you're kind of going to start enjoying them and uh, that will be it for this short review of british cruiser line now I gotta go and get deleted by the battleship so I can progress to higher tier and get deleted by the uh, higher tier battleships. <laughs> and that's it folks, take care and uh, I'll see you on the high seas.